Welcome back guys to the last part of this game of mine against Erwin and Leami played 2012 in the European Championship and it's truly an epic game and I hope you see it the same way and we'll see how this game concludes now. So here my opponent still played for a win. He took E takes F5. Rook takes f5 would have been possible and here it's quite easy for black to achieve a draw with rook f2. Bishop takes b8 and now you can see it's a perpetual because if I play king f1 then rook f2 and now I have to play back king g1. If I play king e1 simply h2 and there's nothing that black will stop from queening his pawn and mating me at the same time. So that's not working. So that would be an easy perpetual. But my opponent of course still want to win because well it was just such an incredible game with chance for both players and we both still want to win so now e6 this pawn is pushing forward and now my opponent made a decisive mistake he gave a check on h2 and this was not necessary i mean really he could play this check probably at any time he has to give up his rook on f7 by playing f4. If he plays rook takes b7, this would also lead to a draw, but incredibly, I mean, it's just amazing, amazing. Rook e1, and now enjoy the next move. Rook e7, wow. Like a sacrificing his rook just to gain one more tempo. Bishop takes e7, and now f4. And we'll see some beautiful variations once again. Two, two possibilities for white to draw this game. One is rook f1, g4. Now you might think, how can white possibly stop this pawn roll here? But it's possible. Bishop h4, g2, rook e1. Now e7 is quite a threat. So king f8, e7, king e8 and now <laughs> I'm just getting too excited here <laughs> bishop g3 wow this is the only way to stop these pawns because now after f3 obviously it can take on b8 so black has to take but now these pawns are stopped and the only thing white has to worry about is that the bishop comes to c5 so white plays rook e6 now bishop f4 Wow, the line is still continuing. I'm, I'm following the annotations of Anders Gear, but I, I think it's worth it to show this line. Now, c4, d takes c4, rook e4, bishop d6, again threatening bishop c5. It looks like a study pretty much, right? I mean, how can such a position possibly arise in a normal game? I mean, it didn't arise in the game, but it was possible. Rook takes c4, king takes e7 b7, bishop b8 again, bishop a7 is a threat, so rook a4, king d7, and now rook a8, bishop f4, bishop f4, and now rook d8. Black is taking the rook, and finally white is, has, um, White got all his pieces sacrificed and it's a stainlet. Well, I just had to show you this line. I mean, I just had to. Okay, but another way to draw, maybe less beautiful but also possible, is in this position, bishop d6. Now f3. And now once again, the white bishop is sacrificing himself against one pawn. And here, rook d1. And once again, it's amazing. Both pawns are not queening in some way. King f8, b7, king e7, rook takes d5, g4, rook d7 check, king takes e6, rook d8, but now f2 check. Black's counterplay is just coming in time. h2, rook h8, king d7, b8 queen, bishop takes b8. The rook can take because of h1. So king takes f2 and bishop e5 and once again it's a draw. Wow. I mean it would have been the 
the logical outcome of this game because we both had clearly winning positions and a draw would have been the logical outcome. But he played h2. But there's one more line I would like to show you. Um, he should have played f4. It would have been maybe the easiest way to achieve a draw. e7. That is also a very nice trick here once again. Winning a tempo and we will also see this in the game. Black has to sacrifice his rook once again. And now f3. So now like threatening to play h2 followed by g2, so I have to play rook c2 to sacrifice my rook on g2 against one pawn to stop these pawns. f takes g2 and bishop d8. Now bishop c7 is a threat, obviously, and I would be winning, but likes to move, plays bishop d6, now threatening himself to queen. And I have to play bishop e7, and funnily enough, there's no way for black to to um, get out of this chase by the white bishop. Bishop f4, bishop takes g5, and so on and so forth, and it's a draw. So let's see, let's finish this game up finally. I mean, that, it was really an incredible game. And I hope you don't mind that I repeat this so many times, because I truly believe it was the most unbelievable game I've ever played. So he played h2, king h1 f4 and now there's a there's a small but very important difference to the lines we had just seen and here my opponent had missed this idea of playing e7 if i play e takes f7 then the king is coming into play and i cannot play this idea to play the bishop to um, c7 and black um, king might um, come to defend it, but I'm just seeing, I at first thought that black might be winning here, but now I'm seeing the comments of Anish Gir, and he's saying that white is also winning here by the already standard sacrifice of the bishop against a pawn here, either with bishop g1 or with bishop f2. Wow. So it looks, seems to be also winning, but e7 is way stronger. Rook takes, only move, otherwise I'll queen. Bishop takes, and now very simple, bishop d8, bishop c7, f3, and now rook c2, and now we see the difference with the pawn on h3, black could play g2 and create um, mating threats, but now g2 I would simply take twice, obviously, only moves, and these pawns are stopped, I'm going to play bishop d8, bishop c7, there's nothing black can do, and white is winning. And if f2, also the pawns are stopped, rook c1, everything under control and there's nothing black can do. So you play king f7, but rook d8, and now bishop f4. So there's one last trick I have to avoid. Um, if I play bishop c7 here, suddenly I would be losing once again, because now he's controlling the square on c1. So of course I saw this this last trap of my opponent and I played b8 queen. Since I have two pawns on the b5 I can give one up to deflect the bishop and now he played f2 if he takes on b8 now simply bishop c7 and yeah I will queen. So he tried f2 but now I just play queen a7 check and if I don't have anything better I'll simply play the queen back to a1 everything under control and of course I'm completely winning with queen and rook up. So Anish Giri writes here I can't say this game was perfect in a direct sense but it was certainly a wonderful advantage for the players as well as the spectators and I, I cannot say it in any better way because truly it was such an exciting game and I hope I really hope you enjoyed this this game, which I would call my most exciting game I've ever played. It certainly wasn't the best game, clearly. There were so many mistakes. And I shouldn't maybe put this game in my, in my series, my best games, because it wasn't really such a great game um, 
if you look at the quality, but if you look at the excitement and the possibilities, the beauty, the spectacle, spectacle, is that a word? Well, <laughs> you know what I mean. And I hope you, I hope you truly and enjoyed watching this game. And yeah, that's about it. That was this epic game and I'll see you soon. If you have any questions, you know what, post them below and I will read them and answer them. So, see you soon. Bye.